السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ اللہ Sayyidi, you mentioned last night in last night's video mm. that he would say he follows Allah. So will he portray himself to be a Muslim? Also, are there any good UFOs or will there be just bad UFOs following Dajjal? Yeah. The cousins believe in Allah. It's not, Allah is not a Muslim thing. It's the Creator. The other cousins, they believe in Allah. Right now they're arguing about language but all the ones in the Middle East they say Allah and they know Elohim and they know these words. So they all believe in that and their Messiah is going to come and say, look we have something all in, 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 in common, let's all agree to La ilaha illallah. And then they have a, a conference on What's the conference that the Pope made on Abrahamic faiths and they hosted him big in, in those areas that they bought soccer balls. So they want to promote now what they call Abrahamic faith. So that's the… the this is our, some of the cheat codes that awliya are giving out that this is going to be their line but we know the end so who cares what they say at the beginning. But people seem to think, oh it's okay let me listen to what he says in the beginning but then his ear already locked onto you, he has a hook onto your ear. We already know the end game is he's going to call himself God and they're waiting for another one that he thinks he's God. So that's a crowd you don't want to be in. Whatever nice they say now at the end it's about them calling themselves ilah. We want nothing to do with them. Nothing to do with what they say, nothing to do with any conference they have because we are La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah They don't want to hear anything about that. So no, but there are Muslims amongst them and there are the cousins amongst them and there are this amongst them. He's going to try to unify the world into that ocean but know that they're going to take and disarm the people of the key and the key is Muhammadun Rasulullah So we have to think like a bridge. There is no way to the bridge of La ilaha illallah because it doesn't face you. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Where are you? We're in creation. We're at the bridge of Muhammadun Rasulullah There's no way you can not go over the bridge of creation and move towards the reality of the Creator. No nation is capable of that. All of the risalats and prophecies of other prophets was existing within the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah That's why for the Isra we said again, the Isra all the prophets had to take their shahada from Sayyidina Muhammad because they prayed with him. How, how, how do you pray with Prophet He's the Imam, they all make their salah and they give tashahud. And they give the shahada to Sayyidina Muhammad, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu Muhammadun Rasulullah They're witnessing it on the Isra. Means they all took their initiation into Islam and the deen of Islam is… the deen of Allah is complete is Islam because they all accepted Muhammadun Rasulullah As a result all their nations belong to the nation of Islam. 
of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's no way to go on that bridge without going through the door of Prophet ﷺ. So where's then the Dajjal taking people? Off the bridge. Because at the middle of the game he's going to tell the people who are following him, you, you know who I am? I forgot to tell you I was shy. I'm a messenger of God because he comes to fight. After he fights he comes to say he's a Prophet. After he went that far he says, you know let's just really tell you the truth, <laughs> I'm walking God. But then you can't leave, you can't walk away because he pulled the rug, he pulled the ticket and our protection is Muhammadun Rasulullah That's why the ish, the love, the milad, all of these are building and locking the bond of this connection with Sayyidina Muhammad most important because you see the ignorance that's coming. So you make your durood al-sharif when they start sending you all of these ridiculous sciences. They're the same scientists who told you they went to the moon and they didn't because Allah says in Qur'an, try to penetrate the heavens but you need a sultan. They don't have a sultan. Sultan and nasira is the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad their little ship can go even I think over a hundred miles out of the orbit because there's a whole bunch of nuclear stuff, nuclear and Van Allen belt. They would have been like roasted turkey moving into that zone. They know that. So there's the same scientists telling you now this is like this, this is like this. Again the science to promote ignorance, not the science to enlighten the hearts of believers, inshaAllah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, how to stop judging people based on their actions and thinking negatively about them and clean the heart from sins? Stop, make your salawats, judge yourself. After you finish judging yourself, truly wrote down your bad characteristics fought all those characteristics, perfected yourself, now ask Allah to be of service to His creation. So if we can busy ourselves in our tafakkur and contemplation and resolve all of our issues then we would be less busy trying to resolve other people's issues. So that's the whole process of tafakkur and contemplation and how to connect and, and vibrate. Those are the talks that we said. How are you going to have a quantum entanglement and rise? Now they're releasing their AI computers and quantum computers and bringing out all their sciences. This, these realities they're talking about are proving the madad. And the original quantum entanglement is the kalima. The La ilaha illallah entangled its power and brought Muhammadun Rasulullah everything is existing based on that entanglement. Because La ilaha illallah is unseen and will never be seen. So it's a force and a, it's a might that making it come through Muhammadun Rasulullah Therefore Prophet becomes the mirror, the shadow of Allah the reflection that's created. But the Creator can never be seen, can never enter into the presence. So it's that very entanglement they're trying to understand. And our whole nature is based on that. If you entangle yourself you're going to feel. If you love somebody entangled with your children, if they become sick you feel sick. You, you can't breathe, you, you can't function because you're entangled with them. This is what's meant for the madad. That when you're making your connection and asking, Kunu ma asadiqeen, Allah wants us to be with truthful people at all times. It's not about physical companionship, it's about my soul to be with truthful people at all times. I visualize the light of their being in front of me and they, Ya Rabbi, ask my light to be with their light and that this reality to dress me and bless me and then an entanglement begins to take place. 
in which the light begins to enter into our lights and we begin what we call fayez. Now explain all of these Arabic words with their sciences. What's the fayez? It's what they researched of entanglement. That how are two particles that are separate and distant but something happens and the other one is reacting. That's what we call fayez. The light and spirit of this reality that as soon as you meditate if a connection begins to take place they can begin to send a fire as an emanation and a light that affects an individual. Could be thousands of miles away. Time and space they found was no relevance because they're trying to understand quantum which means light. Light has nothing to do with the physical world. Your physical being has nothing to do with your spiritual being. How big is your soul? No understanding. But what we do know is that when Prophet was speaking and the Sahabi are speaking that if the sun and the moon are placed in my hands, meaning what? They must have huge soul in which the sun can be in one hand and the moon can be in another hand. Means the light of our reality, we don't know how far it's outside of the physicality. But enough that Allah said in Qur'an that if you kill one as if you killed all. Why? Because we must be like a, a, a web of lights that are all entangled. All our lights are overlapping. Your light is not an LED just in one body. It diffuses in space and time. How big? So your light affects him, his light affects… we don't know how far out it goes. And if the ba- person has bad energy you feel the heaviness and if the people have good energy you feel the fires and the lights uplifting the heart and the soul. So then Allah warned for us, be with good people. Why? Because if you be with bad people you're going to get heavy and, 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 and uh, not a good positive experience, you're going to take on the bad energies. So our life was about being with people whom had good energy. Because if my energy is off a little then at least when I enter into that ocean of reality that light begins to uplift me and energize me, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Ramtullah The behaviors based on our ego seem to be from an immature and childish nature. <laughs> How to acquire wisdom to elevate? And can the ego be related to our inner child issues? Yeah, you have to listen to the talks on the seven levels of the nafs. So everything is based on our experiences. And the first level of entry is amara, is renegade, is against God, is against everything and only wants destruction. So these are the seven levels of the nafs and the ego. Those have to be understood, those talks can be watched or the article on nurmuhammad.com website, you read those to understand the self. And then the meditation (coughs) book on how to understand the realities of meditation and tafakkur. So everybody comes in with an ego that just wants to destroy. And it's going to be worse based on its experiences, you know, what was done to it, what it uh, conditioned. If they condition the ego like a Rottweiler or like a tamed creature. If it was trained to be aggressive and angry then of course they come like uh, angry individuals and they've beaten all their life, yelled and screamed at all their life. So the amara is very strong, very bad and harms people, wants to harm people. So these are the realities of the self and when we come to the tariqahs it's to be uplifted from this bad character. And the only way to truly be uplifted from the bad ego is by Divinely Knowledges because the Divinely Knowledges are like a rope that lift people up. But they have to play a part too and meditate and contemplate, do their zikr, do their good deeds and good practices so that they can change and, uh, and build their reality and their soul, inshaAllah. 
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam If there are traumas that affect our faith and ability to connect, does it make sense to resolve that first through understanding ourselves? Yeah, but this, the self that was traumatized, how are you going to understand yourself with yourself? The connection has nothing to do with that. The connection is an energy so that you can resolve that. So when I have an issue with myself, I, I can't bring myself into the room and say, let's resolve it. Um, the self is the very problem of it. Whatever happened to it, whatever it thought, whatever was done to it, that is the problem. How are you going to resolve it by yourself? That's the self-help people that they propagated in these areas that you can help yourself. Well, it's the very self that got you in the trouble in the first place. So it's like falling in quicksand and say, I'm going to lift myself out. Or the, you hear in, in the Muslim community, if you make sin, what do I do brother when I have sin? Uh, ask Allah istighfar and don't do again. If it's that simple, we'll all be walking on water. But you don't think it occurred to us to say that? But it doesn't happen that way. What happens actually, shaitan comes after you, he's throwing you in quicksand. And the more you move seems like the faster you're going down. So Allah kept us as a community that, كُنُوا مَا صَادِقِينَ Keep the company of, of, of pious people who are pious in their deeds and actions. Why? Because a fellowship of good people can lift you up. That, oh, I feel I'm doing like this, okay come make your zikr, do your salawats. Come these are the awrads, keep the company and the zikr. The zikr can send an energy that takes away negative energy, negative thoughts, doubts and depression and fill you with positivity. You couldn't do that yourself, you're already in a negative cloud over your head. <coughs> it doesn't have to be even in person. You don't feel good, turn on the zikr, join the live, watch the videos even if they're not live. Make your madad and support because the madad and energy comes. Like we said, it's a telephone to the Divine. As soon as you make the madad, you're making a call with your soul that, come I'm in need of support. And this is Allah's rahmah and mercy and these lights come and sadness begins to go. The salawats bring lights and energies and sadnesses begin to go. Because a light is coming like sunshine through a cloud. But what shaitan wants for people, no, no, this is not allowed. Of course it's not allowed according to him because he wants to be alone with the person until they throw a rope and harm themselves, SubhanAllah. So of course shaitan's ideology would be that, isn't that the end game? So when you say, why shaykh would they teach something like, you can't do that? Because the end game is to put you into ignorance and destroy you. Why would shaitan want you to keep the fellowship of pious people? He has no benefit in that because it comes against his game, inshaAllah. As alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the reality behind many prophets, sahaba and awliya having multiple maqams in different places? Also are lake monsters from the jinn also? Mm -hmm. Watching uh, <laughs> sci fi shows. InshaAllah. The what was it? Prophets being in different places? Prophets, Sahabas, and Aulia have different maqams. Different maqams. I don't know. What, which different maqams they have? That they have sightings of where their spiritual presence was, and sometimes they, they build something for their spiritual presence was seen, and the others are where their physical presence are seen. So any time something of a spiritual nature is somewhere, it calls us to contemplate, meditate and connect our heart. And this was Surat Al-Kahf when Allah describes the story of the sleepers of the, ca of the cave, that they were strong in ibadah and so much so, this is all the stories of Surat Al-Kahf, that what Allah at the end of the ghasa says, build a masjid over them. Why? Because pious people have a very positive energy. When you build a masjid around them, you take the barakah and the blessings of that energy. And that's why many masjids were established around the, the bodies of pious people and pious servants of Allah Not to worship the people, it's the worshipping of Allah 
But that pious person is not dead. Allah describes they're very much alive in their grave. So he's still in ibadah, still has the immense love for Prophet so must be like a, a sun of realities, immense lights must be emanating from that maqam. Anyone who comes into that masjid is going to be dressed by the light of that shaykh or that wali or that, or that uh, Prophet of Allah because he's busy in his ibadah. And Allah's rida and satisfaction is upon them. But again shaitan comes and says, no, 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 this is people worshipping. Why would it have to do people worshipping? Allah has everybody making tawaf around Sayyidina Ismail in the Kaaba. Well, why they're not complaining there? Because those people would try to but they can't. Allah put Sayyidina Ismail right there and everybody has to make tawaf around Sayyidina Ismail they have to pray. So this is the religion, Allah wants us to be with pious people in the company of pious people and Allah knows that the, the worshipness is for Allah and that nobody is confused of who they're submitting and who they're making sujood for because they pray at the Kaaba, they're not submitting to the stones, they're not praying to the stones, they pray to Allah If Allah was worried about that He would have destroyed the Kaaba. Because he would say, oh these people are going to be confused, they're going to come there and they're going to now think that they're, they're going to pray down and make sujood to the stones of the, of the Kaaba. Allah didn't have that concern, he said, no I know my people they're going to worship me in their heart but they have to be unified and take the blessings of this location. So this is the immensity of the religion and the deen and Allah sent these souls as a blessing for the nation inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon. Wa salaamun al mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa, wa siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.